What is up everybody? This is Aprilia AI and today I'm gonna be reviewing an AI image generator known as Dream Like Art. And I gotta say we got so many of these at this point. We got Mid Journey, we got Dal E2, we got Stable Diffusion which has so many forks out of it. And there's gonna be more of these obviously in the future. Some of them I believe are gonna be more specified in like vector art or 3D renders or pixel art and things like that. And there's gonna be variations. Some are gonna be free, some are gonna be paid and some are going to be offering free credits or free trials and etc. But today we're going to be focusing on dreamlike art which comes along with free trials. You basically get free credits uh, by using this application and there's also a paid version for this one and I have my affiliate link for the full disclosure uh, down below in case you want to sign up and I definitely recommend in general to just use all of these and find out the best one which works out whatever it's going to be free or a paid version. Uh, there are different types of functionalities and most of them are going to be available for the free version but there are certain things which are going to be behind a uh, paywall basically. So one of the things that um, uh, Dreamlike is really good at is basically like creating these images like pretty fast so that's something I actually like. Um, and it's very easy to use and user friendly like it's running on not, not on your own computer which makes things like a lot of people don't want the hassle that comes along with stable diffusion tweaking it and using your own computer to basically render it up especially people who are using laptops or tap tablets in general they have don't have the option to basically run stable diffusion and there are different types of things like upscaling and you can use these natural languages and fixes and sketches and things like that and here's a couple of like uh, images that have been generated with it and obviously the big question here is that can I use these images uh, commercially and yes you can long as it's actually within the terms of service I believe as uh, long as it's like not illegal uh, content here so um, so that's that's good and there's uh, API is gonna be um, released later and etc but let's now jump into the actual thing here and well actually we should probably look into the pricing a bit here to kind of give you a bit of an understanding so this is the uh, interface here, and I really like it. It's very clean, loads fast, and you know basically has everything that we need. Um, so you get 24 credits per day, 100 credits when you basically sign up for a new account. Um, you are able to use these images commercially, but you are going to be in lower priority generation and only going to be having one parallel generation uh, alongside with the one. So in case you're going to be generating four, you have only two going on at the one time. And there's going to be limited settings and then there's like uh, these different plans which come along with um, different monthly billing and obviously if you take the year plan you are going to be getting a bit of a discount from that. And there are going to be better, feature, better features and obviously more credits and higher priority generation and you can obviously generate more images at a higher pace. Because there are a lot of people who are looking for that one specific perfect image. So they have to go through like multiple times prompting very something specific until they find out. I mean, some people are perfectionists like that. Um, there is the profile where we can basically see everything that we have done. Uh, this account is firstly new, so there's nothing here. Um, there's settings where you can just like add in and which formats these images are being downloaded. Obviously, these are kind of like if you know you're around way around internet. There are multiple tools which allow you to basically uh, save files on different formats. Um, we're going to be using JPEG right now here uh, in case you're going to be doing you know, website owner. I obviously recommend WebP. But um, let, let's let's try now something out. And here we have, and what I like about this is that there are different models here available. And some of them are, well, created for more um, fantasy. Some are more photorealistic. Like this one is realism. Because there are certain things which don't come along with any sort of presets here at all. Uh, counterfeit is really good for anime, for example. We got Dreamlike Diffusion, uh, Dreamlike Anime, and we got Stable Diffusion 1.5 as well. Uh, probably not my choice of tea, but let's uh, go with the Gadinsky. And here is going to be the prompt. There's also support for negative prompt. I think this one is pretty good to go with if you're going to be uh, generating humans. And you have initial images, which you can also add in here. So you have reference images, which is a really feature like. I'm going to be just going into mid journey. I found something uh, kind of cool here and I'm just going to be copying this and we're going to be using this as the, the prompt here. And here we can see how many images we want. Um, and obviously what I like here is that it actually tells me how much credits are being used. In like mid journey, for example, it's like kind of loose, like how much you're going to be spending on each image and etc. Like 
Um, it doesn't tell you like very transparently about that. It just takes out you know different sums. And I want actually a portrait like the original image, or we actually could go for mobile. So maybe when I want a mobile um, thing, then there's the advanced tab, and this allows to basically change the height and everything, and the guidance. So this is meaning that how creative the image is going to be and how many steps there are going to be. And you need the upgrade to basically use this. More steps usually means better quality and smoothness of these things. And let's now uh, generate five images and we can see. So as you can see, we are in the free version here. And so it was generating one at a time. And these are actually looking quite the same bit of like small, small differences here. So here we have, you can see the image quality is pretty good. It's um, a bit blurry, I guess. I mean, it's not like super blurry, but let's let's try another. Let's try another model here. Could we see a bit of a different one with Neurogen? And we're going to be generating again. And so as you can see, it's like pretty fast. We're talking about three seconds here. Okay, so now we got actually something that was increased and there's also an enhancing tool so once we got a like let's go through all the models here to see you guys have a bit of an idea like what what exactly can be prompted out with such a prompt so these are actually a lot better than the uh, the first ones here so let's uh, change neurogen and there are like certain engines which are just a lot more uh, trained into like specific dimensions and I noticed that so many for example, in Stable Diffusion are there to like generate it for these portrait and mobile extensions. And I don't like that because I usually use uh, the desktop 16 to 9 dimension. So that's something I like to do with my images in general. And this is a lot more realistic. This one is pretty good. The hair just looks kind of weird here. And okay, this is just weird. But um, this is a bit of an older realism version. And then we have the counterfeit. Let's go with that. And let's see what we get. And you can also randomize different things here in case you want to try something else. And yeah, this is pretty good. And you don't always necessarily have to use the negative prompt. Um, apparently it randomizes that too. Actually, no, it doesn't. So let's do another one with here. And let's actually try a different dimension here because it, I think it would be important. Let's do a different guidance here. Let's try to actually go for desktop version. And let's see how what we get. And then we're going to be jumping into the enhancing feature. Well, actually, we can start that with already. Okay, this doesn't look very clear to me. Um, let's take out the best image here, which is probably what I like the most was, was this one. So you can... Well, first of all, you have the ability to do variations out of it. So that's good. So if we want like, okay, we like this image, but we want to try something a bit more different with it. We have the, also the ability to do that. So that's important because a lot of people want to do post-processing. They want to do variations out of the images. So this is actually like, fr frankly, actually a decent tool. Midjourney has this. Uh, I mean, a lot of them have. Let's uh, take out the best one and we can continue from there. And maybe the dimensions are actually are not the best for this type of image. This probably looks actually the best. And let's see what the last one actually does. Okay, this one took a bit longer. Well, let's go with this. And what we can do is we can also enhance it so we can upscale this. And uh, you also have the fixed faces feature. So a lot of the times or when you have a very zoomed out image, you can see that, well, the, the faces get kind of blurry. And that, that's sometimes when you need to fix the faces. So here is the original image. And here is the 4x. So this is pretty good. And the 4x feature is very nice because if you are going to be submitting AI art to like out of base stock or elsewhere where you sell it, you need to have these high megapixel images. So this is actually not like bad quality. I think the face is a very detailed, but the, the proportions here are kind of off. But here we could, let's see, like here, we want to enhance. Let's see how the fixed facing would be working with this, because this doesn't have the most detailed face out there. So let's see. Well, yeah, I didn't do really that much. And here you can see that there's some um, text, text there. That's something I'm going to be talking about in my 
Laura creation guide when that's going to be coming out for Stable Diffusion. And then you obviously can um, zoom this out to have a better view of the images that you have created. So this is what we have created so far. Um, there's also an edit, which you can increase the image guidance here. Let's try that. Okay, we're apparently not able to do that. Those, this might be um, behind the other, other, other. Um, so let me try to put out another image here, just a random image, generating the blend of the two images, and it will create something out of those two. And that's a very important feature because sometimes like, okay, this actually is a pretty good, not most detailed, but it's like bringing out the elements of the, these two images not like super bad actually so I like this tool and as I said like most of this stuff is behind the paywall in case you want to access all the features out there and did we try all of these let's like the dreamlike diffusion let's do um I don't know why it doesn't allow us to okay there we go so these turned out to be actually okay this one is probably the best And there are like, um, there is not like a feature to like fix out eyes or things like that. I've seen that on a couple of other features. Now these are actually nice. Not too bad. The hairs are kind of wacky, but that's all good. So I don't really have much else to add here. I think there are, you know, enhancements in terms of upscaling the images here. You have a lot of the essential tools that you basically need to get started here. Um, this one actually didn't turn out to be that good. This was a bad, let's not fix the face. Let's see how that turns out. Okay, much better, much better. So yeah, um, I would say the Dreamlike Art is like a great, you know, tooling system in case you don't have stable diffusion for whatever reason. This is a great way to kind of learn about like stable diffusion works because you have the negative prompts, you have the positive prompts and you can like try these out there isn't I, I wish there was a bit perhaps a bit more of these um different models here available like a bit more newer ones or ones that are very popular but um i have to say that it's still like pretty decent you know for a free tool and obviously there's the paid version but i'm not gonna blab any longer here in case you have any questions about dream like art i can answer best to my ability i would say it's like a pretty okay sometimes like here for example the images are not very good quality. So there's many variations based on what model you're going to be using. And that's going to be having a great effect, obviously, on the quality of the images. But also you can always add these uh, different types of prompts, which might actually increase the quality. But obviously you're not able to use textual inversions or LoRa negative prompts, for example, which would be very useful on these types of things. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more reviews of AI tools in the channel. And I will be seeing you next time on the next video. Cheers.